did one thing's done properly, I have to say, you know, I know I'm no angel. Yeah. In, in terms of uh, what you identify as your own best characteristic, what would you say that is? Um, I don't know, a will to win, I have a good desire to do well. I always try and give 100%. Come from a good background in terms of the area from Cork, you know, sport and family, and uh, always want to do well. And I think that's, that's a good thing to have. Does that still, by the way, motivate you, the fact that you remember where you came from, you know, things were tough enough growing up. Does that still motivate you? I hope you? so. I hope so. That, that's always there. I always try and picture, you know, I think I was one of the lucky ones. Uh, I don't think I was that talented in terms of the skills you were on about Ronaldo, but I had a good desire and a will to win and that certainly got me across to England and, you know, and hopefully, you know, helped me have had a decent career. I asked you about your strengths, you know, that relentless, that will to win. What would you say is your weakness? What have you learned about weakness. yourself? Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I am... Um, I am very, I'm very impatient. <laughs> and, uh, um, when it comes to, um, when it comes to Ipswich, that, that might be a bit of a problem, you know. Well, it might be, and that's something I'll have to deal with. Um, yeah, the impatient side of it, particularly in football nowadays, you, you do try, you, you need a bit of patience, and um, and I think that's one of my frustrations. I think towards the end of my time at Sunderland, where. You know, I thought we'd done well in the first season, getting promoted, even even better the second season, staying in the Premiership, having had a lot of setbacks and a lot of injuries, and uh, I'd had a three-year deal, so I really wanted to do well the third year, and um, and we'd obviously won two difficult, poor results, and um, I, I suppose I got frustrated with myself as much as anybody else. And what do you say to people who say you walked, you know, that you walked from Sunderland, that when the going got tough, the, the no, tough, the tough guy got going. Listen, no, no, that's uh, again. You know, it, people have said. I, that. I appreciate that. Listen, everyone's entitled to their opinions, and I have no problem with that. I know myself. You know, I've, I've never lost a, a wink of sleep. Where I going back to Saipan when I left United, uh, leaving Sunderland. I just sometimes know when the times to go. And um, we'd had a, diff a poor result, particularly against Bolton on the Saturday. But if I was ever going to walk, it would have been the Saturday, the Sunday, the Monday, or the Tuesday. I left Sunderland on the on the Wednesday after a conversation with Niall on the Monday. And the new owner on the on the Wednesday, and I just thought you're not for me. You know, you want to go in a different direction to me. And again, from the outside, it might look, but I was very relaxed. I just felt it was the right decision for everybody, and I still feel it was the right decision. Um, looking forward, I mean, we wish you the very best with Ipswich, and hope you get them promoted uh, in a year or two. Looking beyond that, because I mean, clearly management is a learning curve. You learned so much about yourself and about what's required of a manager in Sunderland. You're going to learn more in Ipswich. Do you ever see yourself uh, looking to the national side and, and managing them a little bit down the road? Well, it's, it's amazing. I, I've been at Ipswich a week now, and people are asking me about the Irish manager's job. Well, no, the reason the reason I'm asking the reason I'm asking is that. Um, you know, some people thought that Sunderland was an exercise in management. You, you did it, you ended up saying, I don't like this, I'm walking away. But clearly, you want no, to I, be a manager, you want to have no, a career No, I, I like being yeah. a manager, and I was, I was, very, I was very comfortable in yeah. terms of um, even the, the difficult situation we had at Sunderland. We had a difficult year when I got there and the year when we got promoted. So um, it's just when, when people move goalposts on me and, and I, I feel I can't trust them, that's when I say, you're not for me. And yeah. it was the same even my time at United when I... Me and the manager sat down, we shook hands, there was no, no big drama, I was just, listen, we've come to the end, it's, it's, it's over, and, uh, and that, that was the same as I said at Sunderland, so this management, you're on, a, you're on about learning, you're going to be learning every day, you know, as I said, I've been at Ipswich a week, and even my first week at Sunderland, people are saying, is it a stepping stone to the United job? It's crazy, all I can do is focus on the job in hand, and, and basically not not look too far down the road. Well, the reason I was asking this is because one of the big dilemmas that Giovanni Trapattoni has, and he's done, you know, very well, well yeah. um, is the Stephen Ireland question. I mean, everyone recognises that the Irish team would be much better with Stephen Ireland in the, in the squad, and I know that's your view. How would you go about persuading your fellow Cork man to, to play for his country? Well, it's, it's very difficult. I, I think it's dangerous for me to be second-guessing what's going on there. I've never met the lad Ireland. I don't know his, his background. I don't know the reasons for not playing. And, and I'm pretty sure the manager, uh, Mr Trapattoni, has made an effort. Um, and, you know, we've got to respect the lad Ireland. If he doesn't want to play, whatever it might be, mm. that we don't know, we're, we're all guessing, then you've got to respect it. Yeah. I'm just if, if, you felt, if you felt there was any chance, if there was any chance, a glimmer of hope, you do anything to get him back, he's a good player. Yeah, I'm just wondering, does he need a translator, a man who speaks Cork? <laughs> well, well, the lad Ireland's from Cove, you know, yeah. I'm from Cork, it's, it's slightly different. But, <laughs> but I know what you mean, I know what you mean. But, but you know what I mean, there's someone who... Yeah, I, I appreciate that. No, if I was at his club team and I thought I could, you know, if I ever bumped into him in the street, I, you know, my advice would be, is a short career, you know, it is, it is over before you know it. 
but also he might sit down and say, these are the reasons I'm not playing. You go, well, I you understand that as well. Those. Yeah, of course, as much as we all scratch our head at wondering why people make decisions and silly reports through the media of, of why a player might be doing something, really don't know until you've spoke to the lad. Yeah. Um, you seem very much at peace with yourself at the moment, you know, in a good I place. Am, Pat. I always Pat. Sometimes, <laughs> again, there's, you know, I grow a beard, people think I'm depressed. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I, uh, me, me and my wife and my kids, we laugh at whatever that might be out there about me. And... In Sunderland, on the touchline, um, you didn't get rattled. You didn't shout and roar at the, the fourth official. You didn't, you know, you didn't jump up and down. And people were saying he's in the Zen mode, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone said to me that you're doing yoga as well. No, no. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't yoga when I was a player, when I had a few injuries. Um, but no, when I, I made a conscious effort when I became a manager not to be ranting and raving on the sideline. I just think it looks bad. It doesn't do any good to the, for the players. I know that for a fact. And, and trust me, I did lose it, but when I lost it, I tried to lose it just in the dressing room with the players. Yeah. And I'd done that many times. I lost it last Saturday with them. But you keep in the dressing room. I just think it looks bad on the side for a manager ranting and raving, especially every decision. It's different if it's a major decision like a yeah. penalty. Yeah, you can get upset, but I've seen managers and I've studied managers in other sports where they're losing it at every decision. And then I think it, it loses its point, really. Yeah. yeah. Does it make any difference to those no, no, officials? No, no, Not oh, a blind bit of no, difference? No, I don't think so. I don't can't think intimidate so. them into. Uh... No, you, you can try in the tunnel with some of them, or maybe <laughs> before the game. But I've been okay with the referees as a manager. Obviously, I had my problems as a player, but I, no, I've been fine with the officials. I have to say, I've got. I've got what respect. would you do in the tunnel? Give them the evil eye sort of thing. Not the evil eye, but just <laughs> come on, help us out. You know, if, we feel he's, <laughs> if he's a like on Saturday, the referee gave a penalty against us. He was giving lots of decisions against us, and I just just looked at him at half time and basically, come on, you know, there's two teams out there. <laughs> Was a, yeah, all right. So that was not quite the evil eye, but no. a, little, a little encouragement to help of you along course. the way. Um, what will keep you happy in the coming season? What, what, what do you think is the minimum you will expect? Well, we'll certainly be in the, certainly in the mix in terms of the top six or seven in all terms right. of playoffs. Um, again, it's going to be tough. I'm under no illusions. Again, but I, I am a bit of a dreamer. I do believe we can achieve things. And I believe that at Sunderland, the first day I walked in, I looked at the players. There were a lot of old players. Um, the quality wasn't really there, but I believe that we, we could turn it around, and we did very quickly, thanks to you know, good staff, good support from Niall and the board, and everything was fine, I have to say. And uh, again, I look back at my time, Sunday, all positives, and I believe that can happen in Ipswich. Yeah. Otherwise, trust me, I, I wouldn't have took the job. Well, you're only weak in the job, and yet you've taken time out to come over to Ireland to support uh, your favourite charity, the Irish Guide, Guide Dogs for the Blind. I mean, that's. That's above and beyond the college, is he? I know. Listen, I, I agreed months ago to, to, that I would get, uh, you know, come over for, for this day for the for the launch, and uh, and I enjoy it. And, and obviously, a lot of people give me credit for it, but trust me, the, the the people, the the puppy walkers, the volunteers, they deserve all the credit. It's only it's only one day of the year I come over and really make an effort in terms of, you know, trying to raise the profile, shall we say? And I really enjoy it, and it's, it really is no trouble. Well, Roy Keane, thank you very much for joining us on the Late Late Show. Tonight. For people who want to support uh, Roy's favourite charity, the Irish Guide Dogs for the Blind, their Specsavers Shades campaign, that's going on at the moment. If you want to help there, all you do is text the word SHADES to 51444 and follow the instructions to make a donation. And also, Shades pins are available in stores nationwide for €2. Euro. And that in interview, by the way, was recorded yesterday. Uh, Roy came in just for the day. They have a match on at the weekend. Couldn't get him here live on Friday night, so unusually we recorded that interview to bring it to you. We, uh, we had a choice, do it or not do it. The answer in the case of Mr Roy Keane is yes. Yes, we'll do it. Anyway, I hope you're pleased, even though our studio audience didn't uh, get to meet Roy.